Um, we know, you can see the, the strategies that the, the large supermarket chains are putting out. They are saying 2025, no waste to landfill. So, and that's, in the, that's gonna come through to the supply chain. So these food producers are going to have to find alternatives to landfill. And that's what's exciting about this project is that you know, we're going to be able to fill that gap and um, keep, you know, keep these critical businesses in our region um, you know, trading well through the, you know, as, as the world changes. A lot of people aren't aware that landfilling is actually one of the top five or six uh, greenhouse gas emitting industries in the nation. So you're looking at your cement production, electricity production, shipping, and landfilling is right up the top there. So every time we can divert organic material from here and compost it where we don't create any greenhouse gas emissions, you know, we've got a 23 to 25 times benefit on the environment. Yeah, so Dalverton's, uh, it's a really good story, the formation of Dalverton. It was about, you know, probably 20 odd years ago, four local governments here uh, all had a landfill that was coming towards the end of its life. And uh, instead of all running out and creating their own new landfill, uh, they decided let's get together and develop a bit of a regional facility. Look, Gavin, as I said before, Gavin is one of the, the hardest working politicians I've ever dealt with. He always returns my calls or my messages, um, just very genuine, very down to earth. Um, yeah, look, I'd, I'd, I'd happily go and uh, watch a game of footy and have a couple of beers and a pizza with Gavin. He's just a, one of nature's true gentlemen. Yeah, so we sell to about 12 nurseries all around Tasmania, so even a couple as far as um, Hobart. And uh, yeah, but other than that, probably over 50% goes to broad scale agriculture. So we're selling to, yeah, to dairy farms, vineyards, flower growers, orchards, you name it. Um, and then the thing that we're really proud of is that it's not just uh, hobby farms that are buying this, you know, we're literally talking thousand plus head dairies that are making a commercial decision to apply our compost. And they're not doing it because it makes them feel good. They're doing it because, you know, based on agronomist advice that they're going to improve their soil health they're going to reduce their overall fertiliser costs. They're going to reduce their reliance on synthetic fertilisers. So we think that's an absolutely you know, tremendous outcome and it's a, it's a real um, a testament to the quality of the product that we're producing. Uh, Simon Elvingston, farmer, flower up. Once, once you're a farmer, you're always a farmer. I reckon it's in your blood a bit. So uh, family farm, so yeah, dad, Dad was here, grew up here, and then uh, my brother and I have taken over and expanded since then. So just done a, a pretty significant upgrade on the dairy this year, and the plan is to continue to grow this herd by about another 250, 300 cows over the next two to three years. We're using um, compost or chicken litter, compost and chicken litter, um, and we find, we, we measure our organic matter in our soil, and that has, has been increasing. Um, and yeah, we, I, I think we're growing more grass, or we do measure our grass, so we are growing more grass than, than previously. It's, it's, a, it's a great uh, your circular economy story. We've got uh, you know, those major and minor uh, milk factories, they're processing byproducts, uh, inevitably find their way here. So we probably take up to 10 different products, sludges and different liquids that come, that, uh, that come from those facilities. Uh, we then use it in our composting process to, to create a, you know, a high quality compost product. Um, and then we are selling you know, thousands of cubic meters to um, dairy farmers who are applying that compost to improve their soil health and they're getting a great results in doing that and uh, then of course they're growing the grass that feeds the cows that creates the milk that goes to the factory and around it goes again so you know. Yeah currently on our strawberry operation we we grow in um, you can see here we grow in these in these bags um, of coconut husk or coir and we Every year we use about 4,000 cubic metres of, of, of fresh coir for the new crop. It's been working pretty well for us, but we, we have identified that for a few reasons we'd probably like to try to find ways to um, you know, reduce that or, or, or reduce the amount that we have to bring halfway around the world. So um, at the moment, Dalton take our material and um, deal with it as a, as, as a waste product and we find that 
pretty good and, and they use it in their mixes. But going forward, we're hoping that we can get to a um, situation where they're able to use the product, uh, compost it in, in by therefore reducing the disease risk and then we will hopefully use it back in our system again and, and reduce our need for fresh as much fresh product every year. You know, from our point of view, this is why we're here in Tassie, is, is that it grows, um, you know, it's, it's probably the best place in Australia for growing this, these, these berry types. And um, that's, you know, that's why we're here. The new facility will be based on sort of two major elements. Uh, First one being a, res a large receival hall where we can accept all these different products. So we'll, be ex we'll have tanks for liquids, um, we'll have shredding and screening um, devices for the different green waste and other types of products that might come in. We'll have a, a, a convey conveyor sorting line where people will be able to remove contamination, any anything that's made it through all those other steps. Um, but then the major part where all the composting will take place is we're going to have nine large concrete vessels. So these are fully enclosed. They'll even have a, 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 an airlock door that goes on them so that once the compost material is put in there, um, no odour can leave that vessel. It's fully contained. We'll be forcing air through it, collecting air out the other side, recycling it round. We can apply liquid from within inside there. Temperature probes are inserted with, uh, inside the tunnel and uh, we can monitor and maintain that environment you know, to provide optimum composting conditions. What gets designed here will be the most robust uh, process for our region. What's very different for Northwest Tasmania, if we, if we looked at Melbourne or Sydney, they might have a compost facility that takes 200,000 tonnes of biosolids, another facility that takes 100,000 tonnes of food organic, garden organic waste. Well, our 50,000 tonne facility has to take 10 different types of products, five different types of products I've never even heard of yet because the phone's going to ring tomorrow and someone else is going to want to bring a product to us. So for us, it's absolutely critical that our process is so robust that it can handle more liquid, less liquid, you know, all these different things. So job-wise, it'll be uh, during construction, there'll be uh, over 90 Tasmanians employed. Uh, ongoing, we you know we know there's at least direct jobs for another three or four, but it's really all that indirect that's really important. It's that you know the flow-on effect to all these industries that we're underpinning and allowing their growth and uh, allowing their existence at all. So it's all these you know the major food processing industry you know, players that uh, yeah really need a need a facility like this to remain in business and to grow their business. That's that's where the where the jobs growth will take place.